Okay, in this session, we're going to see how to build custom SSRS, that is SQL Server Reporting Services reports, for Dynamic CRM Online. And the goal is to build a custom report. and get it in here so our users can run it. And um, there are plenty of advantages to using SSRS reports rather than just coming in here and clicking new in the reports area using the report wizard. Plenty of things the report wizard can't do and when we get into the actual designing of the report in the SQL Server reporting services environment You'll see plenty of examples of the kinds of reports you can do there. We can't do here. And what I want to do is I want to create a report for opportunities and in my little demo database here. Got a pretty good set of opportunities for demo purposes. Got things like sales stage and revenue estimated revenue and probability of weighted revenue. Probability times estimated revenue, not surprisingly. I've got uh, a bunch of dates field, date fields for the stage. This is the date that an uh, opportunity entered a stage, so we might be able to do some reports and charts and things like that for uh, pipeline velocity, things like that. So we got a pretty interesting data set here. I'm going to go into Advanced Find. I want to do one thing. I'm going to clear the filter so that I get some one opportunities in there too. And I've got a saved view that is an even better view than the open opportunities view. All opportunities for export. The nice thing about this just includes more columns. Got a lot of columns here, a lot of stuff to work with when we get into the report design environment. So what I want to do is use this download fetch XML button. What this is going to do is take the query and download it locally so I can use that is the uh, to define the define the data set for the report in reporting services. So I'm going to go ahead and save it out as this thing. Overwrite that. Close this out. And now let's start working in Visual Studio. And I'm going to just start from scratch here. So let's create a new project. And I'm just going to create a report server project. And I should say before I click OK here, um, I'm running Visual Studio 2008. I've installed the Business Intelligence Development Studio, or BIDS, on top of Visual Studio. And the reason to use BIDS is this is what I get these report templates. So I get the report server project template, which is the one that I will usually start a uh, custom SSRS report with. You could use a wizard if you want, but let's go ahead and just build a empty project. And uh, from a learning standpoint, starting from scratch is a good way to see this. So I'm going to build this whole thing up from scratch. No wizards, just uh, configure it and then design it. Now, in SSRS, I think, especially if you're new, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the work when you first start with this is in the setup. You know, I've got an empty report here. I see things like reports and shared data sets and shared data sources, but this doesn't point at anything yet. I don't even have a data source, so I have to create a new report and point it to a dynamic CRM online organization and do all that stuff. So that's the first thing we have to do is do some setup. The way I usually do this, I think the easiest way, is in the Solution Explorer for my report server project. I'll right-click on Reports, and I'm going to add a new item. And if I do this and just select Report, this is going to add a new empty report, just like it says right here. That's what I want to do. Again, starting from scratch. From a learning standpoint, it's probably the best way to see this. Now, when you create a new report, the Solution Explorer gets another tab down here for report data. And I always found this confusing at first because it's not exactly the, the most uh, prominent display of uh, tabbage I've ever seen in my life. So down here, I click on the Solution Explorer. There's my report. DLL or RDL file. That's the actual report design file. Here's my design service. We'll come back to that. But you have this report data tab, and the first thing that you need to do is create a data set. 
CRM Online doesn't like shared data sets. It opens the door to some security problems there. So I'm going to go to Report Data. And I'm going to create a data set here, but the first thing I have to do is I have to have a data source. The data source is going to be the dynamic CRM online organization that this thing points to. So first, let's add a data source. And I'll call it uh, CRM online demo database. How's that? The actual data source, this doesn't have a query in it. This is just a connection to the underlying database. So what I'm going to do is I have to create a connection string. And this is always going to be in this format right here. It's HTTPS colon slash slash dev dot CRM dot dynamics dot com and then semicolon, it's got to be a semicolon, not a slash, but a semicolon. I have to now put the organization unique name there. Where do we see that organization unique name? Let's go back to CRM for that. So I'm in the same organization here where I want to do my, where I downloaded that query from. Go to settings, then customizations, then you click developer resources, and here, this gnarly looking thing right here, that is your organization unique name. So I'm going to get that on the clipboard, minimize that, and then just pop it right in there. So here's my connection string. It's always that format there. It's going to be embedded connection. The type is going to be a dynamic CRM fetch. This is for CRM online only. If you're on-premise, you can use the SQL Server type. But this is dynamic CRM online, so we need fetch. And um, now I have to supply it credentials. So I click credentials. And this is going to be my Windows Live ID that I use to get to the CRM online. So this is there's my Windows Live ID. Enter my password. And remember, this is the development environment. So this is the username and the password. I have to give it up here, but by the time I upload this to the to the CRM database, my credentials are not part of what comes up. So I can click OK here, and it tells me I have to specify a valid name. Let's see here. Ah, no spaces in the name. How about I take the spaces out? Yeah, there's always that, huh? So I've got the connection string and remember it's always going to be this format dev.crm.dynamics.com semicolon and then the organization unique name here's my credentials and we should be good to go now the interesting thing about that is you don't really get any feedback you know it didn't let me really test it. it didn't seem to tell me that i you know had a valid connection so if you typed your password wrong something like that it might take a while to figure that out but we've got that data source now I want to make a data set. So I right click data sets, click add data set. And what I want to do here is I'm going to use a data source, a data set embedded in my report. And I'll make a new one. Okay, there's the data source. That's what we're pointing to. So the name of the data set is this one. And I might call this, you know, I'll give this a better name. This is maybe all opportunities and then I point that to the data source that's what we just created and now let's use the query designer and in the query designer once the query designer loads this is where we're going to use that fetch XML file remember the one I downloaded from the advanced find on opportunities so that's what this is for. So I'm, now I'm in the query designer, so I could type fetch, fetch XML from scratch, but I would prefer to do it like this. Here's the XML file that I downloaded. Brings it in. As I can tell it kind of has all my custom fields. I can see that there. Now 
This is the moment of truth. If I click the little exclamation mark here, it tells me it's executing. And now we see that we've got all the data coming back. So this is looking pretty promising. Now, an interesting thing about this, and I can tell by looking at this that the data, these are the ones that I had. There's my, can I scroll across here? I can see all those, the date fields that I have for the opportunity stages and all that stuff. But the interesting thing about this is notice that the first time you see this, this can be pretty cryptic too. In my CRM query, I've got the estimated value field, opportunity, but notice in SSRS, I've got the estimated value and then estimated value value. Let me get those fields, the, the numeric field, date field. SSRS adds a second field with that kind of suffix value with capital V. That is the actual value. This thing is a formatted. So this is not a date field, this is the date field. And this here, this estimated value, this is not a numeric field, this is a character field that's got all the formatting in it. This is the one that I'm going to want to use if I do sums and averages and things like that. So it's a, kind of a tricky thing. And you see that on numeric fields, date fields, where else do I see that? Here's these, it's going to be an issue with my pipeline date fields over here, weighted values. So I'm going to want the ones, generally speaking, we'll want to use the ones that have value on the end. And then uh, the other thing that you want to be careful about is for the customer field. This is the potential customer on the opportunity. It's customer ID field that we want to use. Okay, so now we've got this. Looks good. And this is, it's a, that's a nice, nice data set. So we're, we're good to go. And now that I've got my data set, now I can use go back to the Solution Explorer and I can start designing the report. And that's what we're going to do next.